This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back to the channel. This video is on astronomy and looking at the Ptolemaic system and the geocentric model. Looking at how this model was developed over a course of many years in ancient Greece through different Greek astronomers and mathematicians and mathematicians and philosophers to culminate in the in the understanding of how our Earth and system behave. So we can date the early astronomers back to early Egyptian Empire and Mesopotamia and look at how they studied the stars and position of certain planets. And they realized a lot of different aspects of astronomy just from observations in the night sky and all of their celestial understanding and also religious understanding catered to the stars and the heavens and developed a very basic understanding. Then we came to the ancient Greeks, and this was around 650 BC to around 200 AD. So there's a course of about 800 years, and this is called the Golden Age of Astronomy. And it had certain pioneering figures and people that developed certain ideas that pushed along the, the understanding of astronomy into a more and more detailed situation as time went on. So looking at there's a certain developments that happened in ancient Greece based on simple observations and putting in basic mathematical equations and formula into their observations to figure out things like the Earth was in the center of the known universe and that the spherical objects and planets were moving in a circle or in circle orbits. And then the notion of a uniform circular motion and the understanding of epicycles and different wheels to explain the movements. And finally, the equants, which came later on, which kind of worked out the motion and movement and how fast objects were moving in space. But the one consistent aspect of astronomy we can look at is Mars and the retrograde motion of Mars, which the Egyptians saw, the ancient Greeks saw Mars do this apparent loop in the night sky over a course of around 10 weeks every 2.1 years. And they had trouble trying to explain it using their current understandings, and they tried various ways, but Mars was that kind of thorn in their side because it wouldn't so to speak, play ball in their model, and they had to find ways to try and explain it. So the development of the Ptolemaic system or the geocentric model, putting the Earth in the center of our known universe and having everything evolve around it, basically is a balance between human observation, human thought, mathematical theories, philosophy, and the development of reasoning and scientific understanding and thinking beyond what we see and beyond the Earth and trying to figure out how our system works as a dynamic system, basically. And it starts really with the Egyptians and Mesopotamians between 5000 BC up to around 2000 BC. And they had various acknowledgements in this time. So they looked at the seasons and their culture and society was based a lot on agriculture and rainfall and when certain rivers were high and low wet and dry seasons and especially just in general the seasons so they would calculate the seasons and when the Nile would flood and not flood and looking at the the uh, length of months and how how long a year is star positions and looking at really marking time as a benefit to, to mankind to grow grow crops and feed their people. And also linking up, obviously, the heavens, gods, and religion in terms of space and the heavens. Then we came to ancient Greece, right? Ancient Greece, birthplace of democracy and other fantastic discoveries and inventions. And Miletus was one of the first kind of philosophers in ancient Greece. And he stated that the sun's course... He looked at the sun's course and tracked the sun's course and looked at solstices and also developed more on seasons like the Egyptian. Then came Pythagoras and the whole theorem and his whole bunch of followers. But but him in, him in particular, Pythagoras, he was looking at the earth as a sphere, this perfect circular three-dimensional circle and looked at the moon's orbit. He looked at the earth being the center of the known universe. So he was the first kind of person to put the earth in the middle of this system and everything is going to revolve around it and again looked at uh, certain planets more like Venus and realized that Venus was the same in the morning star as in the 
the evening star. So you just put those two together. Then came Plato. 428 BC. Now Plato was this famous philosopher and thinker and he looked at star positions, the sun movement, the, the, the moon rotation and movement and also planets and looked at concentric patterns and stated that the planets and the stars were all well, mostly the planets were crystalline spheres that rotate inside one another. So he started to develop this idea of moving planets and, and objects around the Earth, but a stationary star pattern beyond that in the heavens. So he started to get a more and more advanced understanding of this model. Then came Hipparchus about 300 years later in 165 BC. Hipparchus was uh, looking at stars. He catalogued 850 stars. And looked at eclipses and orbits of the sun and, and the moon in particular. Looked at the speed of the moon in three uh, phases based on longitude, latitude, and time based on, uh, for the moon's movement. He looked at the length of year. He was only six and a half minutes off the current length of year uh, from his calculations you know, over 2,000 years ago, which is very impressive. He looked at the precession of the Earth and the wobble of the Earth based on the, the, t the length of year. So he figured out the precession, which is a fantastic uh, discovery, and looked at distances of how far things are away from each other. Then we get Aristarchus. Aristarchus in 310 BC. He was an outlier. He was the person that stated that, hey, the sun's in the middle. I think everything goes around the sun. And it was really too early for him in terms of his, his ideas and his theory was it wasn't accepted. It wasn't a common sense answer like the Earth is stationary and, and everyone can see the moon and sun moving around it. So it wasn't accepted, but he was a pioneer in this, this change of system by putting the sun in the middle. He also commented on how the moon just reflects the sun's light and also looked at more distance between the moon and the sun in more detail. Then came Aristotle, Aristotle in 384 BC. So this he was a student of Plato. And Aristotle looked at the universe was finite, was a certain size, and everything in it was spherical because everything had to be perfect. And the most perfect geometric shape is a sphere. So because of God and, and, and religion and being perfect and making this perfect world for us, he then deduced that everything must be spherical and crystalline and moving in these perfect circles around the Earth. And he looked at uh, ether, which was like that fifth element beyond fire and water and ice and an air, and looked at aether as like the the composition of the planets and what it must be made of. Then he also looked at epicycles, adding epicycles, which are the deviation of planetary motion around the orbit in elliptical shapes that are off-centered. And this would act to explain how retrograde motion occurs, especially of Mars. So the epicycles were put in to this this geometric model to explain Mars's apparent motion. And then finally came Claudius Ptolemy, born in Egypt, but had uh, ancestry and descent from, from Rome and from Europe. And he lived between 85 to 100 AD and then died around 170 AD. And he kind of was the, the main proponent and cemented the idea that the Earth was in the center in this geocentric model and this system of epicycles, actually 55 cycles, epicycles to be exact, and really just finalized this model of our solar system being the Earth was still and these beautiful crystalline spheres were rotating on their own path in a circle around the Earth, and it had their own tracks of these planetary motions, and the stars were fixed, and really it aligned perfectly with theological doctrine. So all of the old texts of the old religions and new religions, they all were saying the same thing as Ptolemy and as the ancient Greeks. So this model, this version of our solar system with the earth in the center stood for about 1400 years because the churches and religious institutions were all agreeing, all supporting this understanding of the earth being the center. And it took a long time until 1500s for Copernicus to start to debate and propose a different model, which was called the heliocentric model, putting the sun in the middle. And that led to other advances and the rest, so to say, is history. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. Uh, check out more videos on our channel. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you again.